Hello YouTube, here we have a, another piece of aircraft navigation gear. This is a, a piece of a TACAN system which I believe is for tactical air navigation. It was really used in military aircraft. Uh, I think there was a, a, a similar system for civilian aircraft which didn't have as much resolution. Um, this particular item I believe sat in between the main receiver um, and, and kind of avionics system and the display which sat in the cockpit uh, which obviously had to be very very minim min miniaturized and couldn't have uh, very much kind of processing stuff in it so yeah what do we have we have this uh, quite heavy box um, with a warning on the front uh, I, I can't find any health and safety type warnings anywhere else so I assume that warning is uh, purely purely uh, protecting the contents of this rather than rather than uh, anything hazardous in this item. Um, so it's got two big plugs on it, uh, a couple of uh, readouts and uh, yeah that's uh, that's about it. Uh, Takan coupler it says there, let's, let's just zoom in so you guys can see that. Get it the right way around. There we go made by Smiths. They always make some fairly good interesting stuff. So uh, yeah, despite the warnings, let's take it apart and see what's in it. I'll start with the back. So it has a whole load of screws. Yes, I've cheated. I've removed some screws previously. Inside. A whole lot of round things. Well, yep, you might expect that as it's got some mechanical readouts on the front. So, what's in here? Well, it's rather high density, so it's uh, it's a bit hard to just read what's on the uh, the side of these things to start with. But there's these look like synchros. These are maybe synchros on motors. Uh, that's probably some sort of synchro transformer type device, another synchro, maybe a potentiometer, a few little transformers sitting around, uh, not sure what that is, and that's maybe another synchro. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Interestingly, it's, it's a bit of a a bit haphazard, I think maybe someone's been in here replacing these, replacing something before, because there's there's all this blue ribbon, which I think is original, and then there's odd bits of brown ribbon as, and sorry, the odd bits of black ribbon as well, which um, which looks like a bit of an afterthought. So uh, maybe something failed, and uh, someone someone came in here and serviced it. Uh, it looks surprisingly grubby as well. Okay, let's try taking some of these things out. I suspect they're going to be very firmly attached from the other side and we're going to need to take the whole thing apart. Let's see what I'm go. What is this? This is a synchro control differential transmitter. This one is a synchro resolver. It's a sine cosine. I'm not, not entirely sure what that's referring to, but I'll do some research on that maybe. Uh, 
Motor generator, interesting. So it's got an exciter winding and a couple of other windings. Very high quality uh, motor though, so maybe I'll look into how to drive that. That might be an interesting experiment. <laughs> oh, what else have we got here? Let's see what this rail thing is. And it's stuck, whatever it is. Okay, fair enough. <coughs> Synchro resolver again. Okay. Another synchro resolver. Ooh, that one sounds a bit grotty. <laughs> this part's branded for anti, everything else is branded Smith's. And there is nothing on it which says what it is. Feels a bit like a wire round potentiometer of some sort. Well, it does have quite a few wires coming out of it, so. Hmm, who knows? Control transmitter, okay. This is another one of those very high quality motors, very high quality. No, there's no friction on that at all. Uh, what else have we got here? No indication about what this is, but again, it feels like a potentiometer. Okay, so there we go. We have an awful lot of very, very high precision actuators and resolvers. Which is good. Um, I plan uh, at some point to do some experiments in trying to drive synchros with Arduinos because they, they're extremely high quality, extremely robust and they turn up quite often in, in surplus military kit. So I think it would be quite useful to, to have a circuit and uh, and some code to just be able to drive them relatively easily for hobby projects. Okay, let's let's take the front off.
And there we go, that's the inside there. You've got two little window, windows held on with quite a lot of screws. So what have we got here? Well, it's basically just a whole lot of wheels, isn't it? Um, all the all the important bits fell out, I think, or came out uh, attached to attached to these various synchros. Um, obviously, some super high quality bearings in there. Quite nice to get these little wheels out without destroying them. Uh, so, so let's simplify things here a bit. So which bit needs to come first when you this, this one? In case you're wondering what's going on here, these little support things are actually used to to hold the this PCB assembly on the back. They, they screw straight into the, the little standoffs, and they've all been Loctited in, so they're really rather stiff. Okay, right. I'm going to carry this tear down on tomorrow for this part when the light's better. Um, in the meantime, I'll just have a quick look at what we've got here. Uh, so that's a little relay, I've seen that in Smith's gear before, some resistors. Little, a little transformer. There's, there's actually not a whole lot on this this assembly. I think it's just sort of a junction, uh, junction board type thing. Okay, back with some more lights. Let's try again. <laughs> It's 
Now the only spanner I have and it doesn't fit. Ooh, let's try this one. I don't think this one's going to fit either. These things have like a uh, little cottage arrangement. There's a little thread on, on this piece and a, a taper there and a matching taper in the end of this nut so it's, as it screws on it, so it tightens up on the shaft. Very nice design. Well, this is very well made. So, uh, zoom in a bit. so uh, each each little spindle here has its own bearing set into the uh, set into this nice thick aluminium plate. Everything's very free turning. Very nicely engineered. Very nicely made gears. Weight must have been an issue since they've uh, bored out little holes in there. So I've seen this a few times in this. There, there are these, these kind of dual gears which look like anti-backlash gears, but they have no spring mounted. So there's, there's, there's no anti-backlash mechanism there. I don't quite know what the reason behind that was. They're going to go to the effort to make this complicated mechanical thing. You'd have thought they could have bothered to put a spring on it. Apparently not. Yeah, and then again, some of them do, like this one. That actually has a built in spring. Although the travel there is uh, rather tiny. But one tooth width of travel. Nice little bearings. I'll save these. I bet they're imperial though or something ridiculous. Oh, eight millimeters. Ish. More or less. Yes, I know I need a bigger screwdriver, but this will do. So 
So that was just a connection block. These all look like connection blocks. Connection block. got some unidentified things, resistors or inductors maybe. Same thing again. And a little transformer on the top. So uh, there, there we go. Another bit of air oh, that was not it. Reduced to uh, a heap of parts, which I shall reuse in something. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Come again.